So welcome to a very short video. I'm gonna do this as fast as I can on how to balance the Fujinon 16 to 55, 16 to 55 millimeter, 2.8 FX lens on an X-T4 or X-T3 with a Ronin SC. So let's just get over the bits you need to start with. You need one flathead screwdriver. You need one Ronin riser plate. You need three screws to go through the Ronin riser plate. And you need one small rig counterweight plate for the Ronin SC. Now you can pick this up from directly from small rig or from Amazon, it doesn't matter where you get it from, any outlet that you can find it's perfect. So the trick first of all to get full um, the trick first of all to get full range of movement is to remove the lens cap and to do that you just squeeze from the side and push up. And I say lens cap, what I really meant was eyepiece. Next you need to remove the lens cap. And then you need to turn your lens hood round correctly. You don't need the lens hood, it's just my preference of, because I don't want glare on my recordings essentially. So I do tend to put my lens hood on. So once I've done that, I set my lens to 23 millimeters in length. That gives me a little bit of wiggle room. All right, I'm not gonna extend this past 35 millimeters. So between 16 and 35 is about as much as I'm gonna do. And obviously if you're moving off the 23 millimeter mark, you will undoubtedly strain the motors a little. So I tend to be around the 23 millimeter mark. Especially as it's not power zoom, uh, tends not to make a difference to me. As so I'll record at 23 millimeters. Next, my DJ riser plate. I attach that to the camera. Put one of those lovely screws through. Make sh making sure that it's straight and on the camera. So there we go. And I will tighten this up using a screwdriver, just because I can, and because it will make a better fit later on. So, again, just double check that that is straight. And the reason you really do need to check if it's straight is because it will affect the balancing. Next, that small rig counterweight plate. Now here's where the trick really is. So you take the small rig counterweight plate and you put the first screw in the slider. Now, if you bear with me a second, because I don't always get this, there we go. Put that one in the slider and the second one you leave out. And the reason we're gonna do that is because first of all, we wanna take that and put that screw that we have in the slider into the screw on the count, on the riser plate closest to the lens. Now we don't mind if the slider is sliding around at this point, we're not going to tighten up the screw. Okay, so I'm gonna take that all the way back. We're gonna look down the hole the very back hole in the center of this counterweight plate, and we're gonna line it up with a screw hole. And then we're gonna take the, sec the last screw we have, that very third screw, and we're gonna feed it all the way through. And this one, if we haven't managed to do this correctly, won't go well. So I'm gonna try again, line it up, Squeeze down the plate so there's no gap. I'm gonna tighten up this screw slightly just, just to make sure there's no gap. And now I'm gonna put that screw in again. And this time I'm gonna tighten up this screw. Now that will hold everything in place. And I can tighten up the other screw if I so choose. And that's perfect. Now that's fairly sturdy, nothing's moving. And now 
Once that's done, you've got the basic recipe for getting this all working. Lock your arms in place on your rolling SC to make your life easier at this point. Put the camera on and slide it to the three mark. Now, why the three mark? Just because it's gonna make your life easier, nothing else other than that. Right, now unlock the, the tilt arm. And what we're going to try to do is balance the tilt arm. Now I'm getting some roll. So I'm going to get some tilt. So I'm going to get it as balanced as I can. Lock it back in place. Looks okay-ish. Around the tilt seems okay. Okay, it's not perfect. And I might need to do this a few times just to get it all perfect. But the next one I'm going to lock my tilt arm, unlock my roll arm and see how much roll I have. I have a lot of roll. So before I start adjusting the roll, what I'm also going to do is push up my slider because they affect each other. The roll and the slider are actually linked. They affect each other a lot. So I'm going to bring mine to one centimeters on my roll and on my slider, I'm then going to unlock that arm again and start messing with my slider until I'm happy. Now this time my sliders come in at 28 centimeters, sorry, 28 millimeters. So I'm gonna tighten that up and just check that. Now I'm not really happy with that. My roll is way off, so I'm gonna undo that again. Bring back forward my slider slightly and I'm gonna adjust my roll. Now this is the most annoying part because on this model, the slider doesn't lock into place until the roll's locked into place. So you get a bit of annoyance here. So I need to get my roll working, push out my roll. And check my slider. My roll's a bit too far. Do it again with my roll. Check my slider. Mm-hmm. Tighten everything up once I'm happy. So now at, well, 27 and a bit, so I'm going to slide forward slightly because I've got a little bit of movement happening that I don't enjoy. And now we're going to test it. Yeah, that looks good. Roll. If I try and sense the roll, nothing. That's great. Right, so tighten that up some more. I don't want any more movement. Yeah, that looks perfect. Now, at this point, this is the bit I hate doing personally. I'm just going to check before I do the next bit that I've got clearance in every direction. I uh, see I've got this knob here is hitting this backstop here. Not necessarily an issue, because I've got the clearance I want on the top side. Okay, so it's hit. when I move it, you see this one, it's actually touching this hinge area here, which is not good, but that's the best I can do. Next, I am going to do my pan, and I hate doing pan. I have to admit, I'm not very good with a pan, but for pan, I just, rotate it and I check if the pan will hold. And I, so I'm gonna lock the arms because this is not fun for me. This makes my life a little bit easier. Now my lens, I'm lens heavy on my pan by the looks of it, because it's rolling, it is rolling. 
and it stays there. So I'm going to pull back on that. There's a fraction. Tighten it back up. Never make massive adjustments. That's a, f a fool's errand. Oh, I'm too back heavy. And that was only with a tiny adjustment. Uh, I'm even smaller adjustment this time. Gone forward a bit. Okay. At this point, I look like I'm good. So I'm going to unlock the arms. All my arms are unlocked. I'm going to power up. And I'm going to see how steady my hands can be at this point. And I go into settings. And I hit balance. Not too much. Trying to get that steady hand. Balance test. I had a locked arm, so yeah, if you ever hear that boinking sound, that doing sound, that means you've got a locked arm when you're doing a balance test. Try again, engage motors, and here we go. And I got excellent, excellent, excellent for all my results there. So a full bill of health, no counterweights. And there you go. That's how it's done. Thank you very much for watching. You guys have a good day.